What's up guys? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my garage. It's pretty cold in here today, but either way, we still got to get some work done. What I'm going to be showing you in this video is a tool that I just made to use my plasma cutter to cut to. So all it is really is this is my uh, plasma cutter. It's just on a little pivot right here. The important part about this pivot is number one, that it allows the head to move a little bit because the piece as you're cutting it and you're rotating it, it will move a little bit. So your torch needs to be able to kind of go up and down with that. And it also needs to be very strong so that as you're rotating this, if the tip of the plasma torch like catches on your paper templates or whatever, whatever you build here for this pivot will hold it pretty solid, which this one does. And then what I've got is originally before I had actually tested it and using used it, I thought I could just press this button and rotate and feed the tube with my other hand and that does not work. It's it's actually pretty difficult to spin this around and have the plasma torch stay right on your cutting line. So it definitely takes two hands to do it. And then I was thinking that I would wire in a foot pedal and that would actually be best, but I don't have a foot pedal to do that with. Maybe I'll do that sometime in the future. But what I did is I ran these two wires into my torch handle and I just soldered it in parallel with the wires that are on this switch right now. So they just come around and they just go to a little switch. So when I, when I flip this switch up, it just closes these two wires and essentially it's like you're just holding this button down. So what I do is I set the torch up, get ready for my cut, and then right before, right when I'm ready to start, I just flip this up, the torch starts, starts making its cut, I feed it around, do what I gotta do, and then as soon as it finishes the cut, I just flip it off, and that so far has been working out really well. It's, it's riding on two steel rails here. These are inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing. Doesn't have to be steel. It could be wood, whatever you got to work with. The important thing is it needs to have a way that you can rotate it fairly effortlessly and slide back and forth. So what I did is I drew up these these little things, they've got a set of rollers on the top for actually rolling the tube around. And then they've got a set of rollers on both sides so that you can slide the steel back and forth. I've got just regular old shop vac sitting here. And when I'm making my cuts, I just have the vacuum stuck in the back of the tube. And that makes it so that when you're making your cuts, some of the plasma arcs or sparks still come out but most of them get sucked right back into the tube and into the vacuum cleaner and it just makes the whole process a lot cleaner and a lot easier to carefully follow your line. If you're wondering what that does to your vacuum cleaner it doesn't do much it doesn't damage it um, the, you end up with soot down in here and you can smell it a little bit a little tiny bit of a burn as it's probably burning on the filter that's in there but it's it's not bad it's actually it's actually better than just plasma cutting in the garage without something. Then the next thing you, that you have to do is you have to ground it and you can't clip your ground clamp. You can't clip your ground clamp onto the back of the tube because you're going to have your vacuum in there. And I don't want to do it without the vacuum. So what I've been doing is I just take a hose clamp, clamp it around the steel. And I just make sure that I clamp this piece of wire in here and then the other end of the wire I actually have clamped onto the ground clamp for my plasma cutter. The only downside to this, this wire that I'm using right now is not very flexible. And when I'm actually making my cut and I'm rotating it, that, that wire has to kind of curl around your tube as you're doing that. And when I'm doing that, I can feel the resistance so it makes it a little bit difficult to follow the cut paths. When I come across some nice 10 gauge wire that's a little bit more flexible, I'll probably pick that up because I think that that would help. If you guys are interested in possibly trying to make one of these for yourself in my shared folder, and I'll put a link to that in the description, I do have the STL files for these little roller devices so that if you have a 3D printer or you know somebody with a 3D printer or there's companies out there where you can just give them STL files and they'll print it out for you, that'll make these little roller devices that I'm using on here. And as far as the, the frame itself, you can really build whatever you want. The only important part is, mine is 36 inches long. To be honest with you if, you, if I had more space, I would actually make that longer, but this one is 36 inches long. 
and these little rollers that I made, you just need to give yourself two inches between whatever it is. If you're using wood or steel, give yourself a two inch gap because the little rollers that I made are uh, the part here that slides between the metal, that's two inches wide. So you gotta give yourself two inches between there for these to slide back and forth freely. So this is the first time I've made some cuts on this. I already have cut these pieces and I ground them up. It does it definitely does not eliminate the grinding. Don't don't let me, you know, mislead you on that. The cuts are actually pretty rough. I in my head thought that when I would plasma cut these, they would be a little bit smoother, but you know, if if it's moving a little bit and it's really hard to get it to not move a little bit, you come up with a little bit of a sawtooth edge. So at first I kind of thought that that wasn't going to work at all, but once you do that and you know, each one that I do, I'm getting a little bit better. You get a pretty good cut. I have learned to give myself a 16th, maybe a 32nd over the line. And then when I take it over and just clean it up with the grinder, you, you actually can clean it up pretty good and it doesn't take much to clean it up compared to what I used to have to do where I would notch it out with the grinder or my chop saw and then like finish the notch with my grinder. There was a lot of grinding involved with that. With this, you can get it probably 95% of the way with this plasma cutter and then with the grinder, you just basically clean out all the slag from the plasma cutter and then just get yourself as close to the line as possible. And you'll probably in future videos see me actually set this up on a more permanent area where I can just kind of walk up to it, hook a vacuum cleaner up to it and, and start notching away because I think it's going to work out pretty good. So I got this funky piece set up in here. So let's see how it works on that. And then uh, I'll show you me cutting some of these other pieces so you can see how it works and how I set it up and whatnot. Oh man, that was a rough cut. That was a very unique cut that didn't actually go all the way around the pipe. It just took a huge chunk out. Um, the end result is actually pretty good. I, who knows how it will actually fit on the piece. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out all the other pieces and then I'll tack it all together and I'll put these on last because I'm assuming I'm gonna have to trim these more. But you saw that, that went pretty rough. I had to retape it because of the way I was making those cuts. It kind of cut the templates off as I was doing it and I probably should have put those on and traced them and whatnot. But either way, I got to show you guys some of how it works. I did a lot of other notches and I'll put some video footage either before or after this so you can see how it works on just a regular um, notch like that. It's actually, now that I'm figuring out some of the idiosyncrasies, it's actually working pretty good. I can notch that pretty quick clean it up with the grinder without too much trouble. And that's what probably 99% of my cuts are. 
Um, the fact that it will do something like this is pretty cool because I do run across these from time to time. This is just like a, a support piece. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching it. Hopefully, I'll see you on the next video, and hopefully this tool or some of the stuff I show you in the other videos will help you guys get out, fabricate, work on whatever it is that you're working on. Hope to see you on the next video. Take care.